want you to imagine that there's sugar flowing through your bloodstream because that's the way that it is and you do have sugar flowing through your bloodstream and then that sugar reacts with things. That sugar reacts with protein or it reacts with a lipid, a fat. And when it does this, it forms this thing. And this thing ends up being very inflammatory and can cause all kinds of potential problems and make you feel really cruddy. At first, that makes it sound like you should never eat protein or you should never eat fat because it's going to combine with sugar and do this. The thing is, is it needs a catalyst for that to happen. Like consuming protein and consuming carbohydrates or sugar is not necessarily inherently bad. But how come when they're combined in the body, they do this thing that's problematic called glycation? Think about an onion caramelizing. That's essentially what happens inside your body. And it's very problematic and very, very real. The good news is carnosine, which is a very inexpensive supplement, has huge effects at stopping this in its tracks. And yeah, I straight up told you what it is. So you can turn off the video and go find it, right? But the reality is I want to teach you how to use it, when to take it, and also please just stick with me through this video so you can learn about it. Also drop a comment down below because it helps the algorithm and hit that subscribe button as well. So we'll talk about the basics of carnosine. We'll talk about how it actually impacts advanced glycation in products here. Now, after this video, I put a link down below for Haya, which is a kid's multivitamin. If you have kids, then you know that it's hard to get them a good quality multivitamin. This one is chewable and it is sweetened with monk fruit. And that is a 50% off discount link down below. I say this because I have a lot of people that watch my videos that are parents. I have two kids, seven and five years old, and they enjoy taking a fun tasting chewable multivitamin. And I know that it's good stuff. It's not just cruddy synthetic stuff with sugar. I feel like I'm doing something good and they enjoy it. And there's days where they just don't get the nutrients that I would like them to get. And having a good multivitamin makes that possible. So that link is down below for 50% off. So what do advanced glycation in products do? What do AGEs do in our body? Well, they can build in our joints, they can build in our tissue, and they damage DNA. So there's kind of the old onage of, okay, someone that has really leathery skin, they look a lot older than they are, there's maybe a chance that they have higher degrees of advanced glycation in products because it can actually build in our skin too. It just causes us to oxidize faster, for DNA to be damaged, and it's just overall not good. It can actually trigger a cascade of inflammatory cytokines and oxidative stress that makes it literally hard for us to even manufacture energy properly. So that leads to insulin resistance and all kinds of other things. So how does carnosine help and where should you use it and when should you use it? Well, let's first look at a study that was published in Applied and Environmental Microbiology. And this found that carnosine has the ability to neutralize what is called methyl glyoxal. Okay, so remember in the beginning of this video, I said sugar and protein combined like aren't always problematic. Like you could have a chicken breast and a banana, but would it glycate? Would you have a problem because you're combining sugar and protein? Not necessarily. You need sort of a catalyst. These catalysts are called carbonyl reactive species and methyl glyoxal is sort of the main one. And this actually starts the process of glycation. So when you have, again, high blood sugar and maybe some protein or lipids or nucleic acid or uh, something like that, what's going to happen is it's going to start, but it needs this methyl glyoxal. Carnosine completely stops some of these reactive species like methyl glyoxal. So it stops them in their tracks and it stops the reactive system at the very get-go. When you can neutralize this before it starts, your body can clear some of these other metabolites and other pieces much easier because once it is an AGE, it's really hard to clear, right? Like you can't uncaramelize an onion. I always go back to that because it's a pretty good illustration, right? Like you have sugar and when you cook it at a high heat, it glycates and it turns into this caramelized onion. So I'm not saying that you have like caramelized cells, but in a way they kind of are. Like they become useless, they become garbage, just leaking inflammation and oxidative stress. How does this impact insulin resistance? Well, Inflammation is a major cause of insulin resistance. As a matter of fact, it's probably the cause. The high blood sugar and the insulin issues kind of come as a secondary effect since it's an inflammatory condition. Now, where we first saw that the advanced glycation in products couldn't be somewhat mitigated by carnosine was actually with some of the brain research because AGEs build in the brain and one of the reasons why we start to lose cognitive function as we get older, as these things build and damage DNA. So there was a study that was published in Neurotherapeutics that was pretty fascinating that found that there was increased cognitive function 
with carnosine right? at a high level. So, okay, what's going on? That's kind of how they investigated this. Let's get into dosing and things like that for a minute, because I think this is what you're after. And carnosine is safe, okay? The thing is, is like you can get it from meat and it's going to have an impact, but it doesn't seem to increase tissue levels within our body a ton, okay? This means that we need to get a little bit more of it. Now, carnosine is already known in the fitness community because there's this thing called beta alanine, and beta alanine is actually half of carnosine. The beta alanine is typically used like for pre-workouts and to delay some of the fatigue. But the reason that people take beta alanine is because in the body, we have histidine, and beta alanine combines with histidine to create carnosine. So the short answer is you can even take beta alanine and have some of this effect, but now we're seeing more evidence that straight up carnosine might be a great way to go. Like go with utilizing three, four, even up to six grams per day of carnosine to get those tissue levels high. What about timing? When would you want to take it? Well, most people take beta alanine or something before a workout because it has a short term effect on buffering the hydrogen, allowing you to push it a little bit harder before fatiguing. And you can definitely do that with pure carnosine too, but there's gonna be a little bit more of a breakdown. Carnosine has a short-term and long-term effect. As carnosine builds up in the system, it's gonna be stronger from an advanced glycation in product side of things, okay? But in the short term, if you were to take it prior to say having a sugary meal or prior to having like a dessert or something that could literally glycate, you could take it about 30 to 60 minutes prior to that and actually have an impact, a positive impact on reducing the risk of glycation. I'm gonna jump out on a limb. I'm not a clinician, so I can't say this with certainty, but a lot of times people say, hey, I have joint pain after I have sugar or I have stiffness or brain fog after sugar. Sometimes it could be an advanced glycation end product issue. It could be quick glycation, and it could be an inflammatory cascade that's just coming from the sugar in the first place for some people. But the real answer comes like when you have that diet for a longer period of time. Is it cumulative inflammation, or is it advanced glycation end products that are actually just continuing to cause inflammation as a result of that diet? right? It could be both. It could be one or the other, which came first, the chicken or the egg. Nice news is that carnosine seems to buffer this and we can at least stop it in its tracks. And then of course, a good lifestyle is going to help reverse some of the damage, right? So we can stop it by using it maybe when we're going to have a cheat meal or when we're having a higher carbohydrate diet that could lead to more glycation or when we're under stress, which could potentially lead to more glycation. And again, if you're going to do that, you're looking at like a two gram dose, right? Two grams or so kind of used multiple times throughout the day. And if you're looking at beta alanine, again, we're looking at four to six grams to really get that heightened effect, something that's safe and you arguably could probably take much more but when we're looking at the literature, this is where most of it stands. We'll see you tomorrow.